Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about the champion who has quite possibly become my new favorite champion. That is not Duchess. She's amazing. But it is Georgian the Breaker. So I pulled this guy about 48 hours ago, and there's been a lot of talk about him. He was on the most recent 10X plus 2X event, and I think he lives up to the hype. This dude is absolutely insane. He is so good. Honestly, I think he's going to be my main nuker, period. Baron taking a back seat. Lioris has been taking a back seat, but this guy is next level so good. And I'm going to talk about the different builds. Uh, it's not really many different builds, kind of two. Uh, one being the one I have him in, which I think is the best. But for early and mid game, I think the approach to him is going to be a little bit different. So first off, let's talk about his books, which I have none. So I have no books in this champion whatsoever. Does he do better with books? Of course. I mean, it's 20% damage on every single ability, plus cooldowns being reduced. But I just haven't booked him because I'm a good clan mate, and I want to save my books for CBC. Well, I don't really want to, but I probably should, right? So his A1 attacks one enemy two times, 30% chance of repeating the attack, which is incredible. He can definitely snowball this and make it crazy. I haven't seen it because I don't use him on clan boss, but this could be so, so good. Clan boss team is probably more of a meme, but I bet he could do some good damage. His A2... Attacks all enemies, decreases the turn meter of all targets by 30%. This effect cannot be resisted. He's void affinity, which means no weak hits. So every time he attacks, unless the enemy has like stone skin, they're going to get their turn meter decreased by 30%, which is so, so good. This is where early and mid game players would change up his build a little bit. Instead of making him just purely damage focused, honestly, I think if you push his speed to like 220, 230, whatever is good for your level of play, this is going to be incredible. I mean, it's a three-turn cooldown when fully booked. And when you combine that with his A3, which attacks one enemy, ignores basically all the damage damage mitigation effects, strengthen, stone skin, unkillable, block damage, increased defense, ally protection, and shield. Once he kills somebody with that ability, gives him an extra turn. So he's going from the A3 to the A2, which reduces turn meter, to the A3 eventually, which gives him an extra turn to re then reduce the turn meter, also dealing a ton of damage, this guy is going to be incredible for Night Revenant's Faction Wars, which is a pretty difficult Faction War to begin with. It's going to be incredible for your dungeons. Dragon. Ice Golem may be a little bit sketchy when you get to the actual boss. Fire Knight. He's going to be good for Fire Knight. He has a turn meter decrease, plus a multi-hit, potentially many multi-hits on the A1 ability. And then an A3, which you'd probably turn off of the boss, but does absolutely amazing damage to the waves. So as far as the dungeon, ch dungeon champion... Amazing. Arena Champion, amazing. Hydra, not so much. Clan Boss, not so much. Possibly, but not like head above everybody else, okay? This guy is going to be significant on dungeons, especially if you're in progression. Obviously, I know a lot of players doing progression probably don't have this champion, but if you are one of the lucky few, then congratulations. He's amazing. Now, the biggest point of, I guess, complaint or like possible negativity about this champion is in his passive. But this passive is literally just an improved version of this ability over here, which is Helm Smasher. Which, honestly, thinking about it, should I even run Helm Smasher on him? So these are the masteries that I have right here. I do have the attack instead of the crit rate simply because the uh, crit rate is plus 5% and I have 108% because of my gear. We'll talk about that in a second. But these are my masteries. Now, this skill has a 50% chance to ignore 50% of the target's defense from each hit placed by this champion. Basically, with his passive ability, I'm looking at it as something that's nice to have, but I'm not building around it yet. Though I may in the future, I think for a majority of players, building around it wouldn't really make sense. As in, still wear your lethal gear, still wear your savage gear, still do all of that stuff, and if that ability procs, amazing. If it doesn't, you're not losing out on anything, right? So as far as the actual stats on this champion go, I'm prioritizing attack, crit rate, crit damage, that's all. Well, speed. Make speed good for whatever you're trying to go for if you're somebody who's early in mid game this is where the build kind of changes you don't need that much damage okay if you're below gold five and your champions are your if your kale is able to one shot the enemies your georgian is going to have no problem whatsoever one shotting the enemy so get 100 percent crit rate build this dude pretty fast he needs no accuracy so build him fast build him with good attack maybe even throw a little bit of hp and defense on him because his hp and defense is terrible so flat HP, flat defense isn't going to be that bad for him. But to be honest, if you can build him a little bit faster, still do a lot of damage, you're going to be able to do a ton of wave control for dungeons. Now, when you get to the arena higher up and you need a ton of damage, 
he's going to easily be able to swap into a very high damage dealing build and do absolutely amazing. So before we actually get into the arena showcase, which is going to be what a majority of the video is, let's do a Dragon Stage 20 damage showcase. Now I do want to talk about him versus Baron just a little bit. I do think this guy is just better than Baron. I mean, I honestly think that I'm going to be using him more often than Baron. Um, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. Let's see what his A3 ability does against this Tayrell right here. 164,000 damage. Pretty decent. Nothing crazy. 164. I'd say it's pretty good, though. Let's see what his A2 does against everybody. 200,000 damage on basically everyone. That is crazy. Now, obviously, if we do this one more time, let's see if we actually ignore some defense. I don't think Helm Smasher or the passive ability proc. Let's see what we do against Tayrell this time. 165,000 damage. Okay. So I guess it did proc, I guess it did activate, I guess it just bad RNG twice. I don't know, but either way, some pretty daggone good damage. I did see a damage earlier that was way higher, like 300,000 damage. I wanna see if I can get that one more time. Let's do Tayrell's, let's hit him one more time. Ignore defense, 263,000 damage, there we go. That is some significant damage. 263,000 damage on a one single target hit, and then 200,000 damage on everybody? This dude is doing crazy damage. Now, let's move over to the area where most of you guys want to see. First things first, let's look at my battle log. So we have a few wins. We just have a speed team right here, though. A speed team with Georgia. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and try a few different battles, okay? So first things first, we're going to try against this one right here. We have an ultimate death knight in there. Let's try a slow team, so tank killer. Um, I do have a Kaimar in this team. I'm kind of liking it so far. We're going to give it a shot, see how it actually goes. Um, but this dude does, does some absolute crazy work. Now, the one thing that kind of hurts him pretty bad is stone is uh, not stone skin. Stone skin doesn't matter whatsoever. It is reaction gear. So reaction gear will definitely make this champion have a bad day. Let's go ahead and see what happens to this Mithrala right here. Didn't kill her. Um, the ultimate death knight has not taken a turn yet, unfortunately. If we use this A3 ability, doesn't matter. It's going to hit ultimate death knight, period. We'll just use the A2. Kill Mithrala. No big deal. Reset with Kaimar. Buff up again with Duchess. Hopefully, Ultimate Death Knight gets a turn here. We'll just hit, uh, I guess, Necrit. I don't think, I think Necrit's already taking a turn, right? Nope, still Reaction Gear. So Reaction Gear is definitely going to be the thing that you got to watch out for. But since Ultimate Death Knight taking a turn just now, let's see what the Nutcracker himself does on that A3 damage against the target with Stone Skin, Shield, Strengthen, and it's Ultimate Death Knight. 64,000 damage. I'm honestly very surprised that that didn't just kill him. I'm very surprised that that didn't just flat out kill him. It's actually the first time I've seen it not kill somebody if they didn't proc reaction. So that's kind of impressive, making for kind of a weird showcase, especially with those shenanigans against that Tyrell in the Dragon Dungeon. But hey, we're going to keep moving on. Let's see what he does. His A2 ability is about to come up, and it should just wipe everybody out, honestly. That A2 should just kill everybody. Let's see. Except for... Ultimate Death Knight, unfortunately, because he's still wearing that stone skin, and the A2 does not ignore that stone skin stuff. His A3 does. A1 ability hits so hard as well. And the chance to do extra hits, there we go. 65,000 damage. Remember, this guy is not booked whatsoever. So 65,000 damage on a single target skill that ignores basically everything, I'd say it's pretty impressive. We do need some more defense ignore, though. Definitely, definitely something I need. Let's try this team right here, okay? We have a Baron. Brogni, Venus Cupidus team. We'll actually just try a fast run, okay? I don't really want to go slower than them. Let's try a fast team. I just recently rebuilt my Arbiter to be fast because for the longest time, I didn't have her very fast whatsoever. Let's go ahead and try this. Maybe we strip that stone skin nonsense. Okay, let's try, try again. Okay, Cupidus coming in for the hit to kill me. There we go. Perfect. All right, so this is going to be interesting. Let's see if we can actually kill the Cupidus through reaction maybe. Okay, no reaction. Very, very cool. Um, I kind of just want to do a single hit against this kind of Venus, to be honest. I think I'm just going to die, though. I don't really want to wake the Baron up just to die. I'm going to need to save. Actually, no. Kaimar's going to reset, so don't need to save the res. Well, uh, oh, this is going to be bad. It's going to hit Baron. Okay, it didn't hit Baron. It dodged Baron. Lady Kimmy has a double hit. And if it would have hit the Baron, we would have been dead, basically. We'll boost turn meter. Hopefully, don't get back around to... A turn before that Baron does? Wow, we did. Okay, well now we just use the A2 and hope for the best. Let's see what happens. Boom, Every, everybody's not really dead, but kind of dead, right? So now Brogni, Brogni's shield killed me, in case you're curious. Brogni's shield 
does do some pretty decent damage. There we go. With uh, Georgia, double hit, 40,000. Dang, 40,000 damage on both hits. If he proc that again, that could just kill everybody just that by itself. I mean, 40,000 damage per hit with a chance to proc the ability again is so, so good. Let's try this team right here. We'll use my fast team once again because they probably have a little bit of speed to them. Like, they're probably not going to get... I'm not going to get lapped, basically. Or they're not going to let me lap them, I wouldn't think. So let's use this A3. Who do we use it against? Honestly, I'm just going to use it against Georgian, our Georgie boy over there. And then we'll use the A1 against Mithrala. Oh my gosh, that is... That is disgusting. That A1 ability is actually beyond impressive. This is unfortunate because the Siffy's going to wake up. But I guess we just do it again, right? Who's turn meter? Who's turn meter? One shot the... Who's more tanky? Duchess probably. 186,000 damage. Wow. A2. It's insanity. It's insanity. Absolute insanity. Here's a pretty tanky champ, uh, team. 486,000 player power. Am I using my slow team? Yes. So let's see how this plays out. Hopefully they uh, get through their turns. There we go. Leo does his thing. Perfect. We'll go ahead and use this ability on. Let's go ahead and use it on Wither. Didn't quite kill her, but that was actually pretty close. Pretty daggone close. Let's see if we can one-shot the Duchess. Probably not. We haven't been having much luck with one-shotting of Duchesses. Not a huge deal because Kaimar just resets, come back, comes back around. We'll go ahead and well skip the buff and don't need to do it just yet. Leo's going to get a pretty big damage here, unfortunately. Okay, no, he didn't. No damage on him, so not a huge deal. We'll go ahead and protect Kaimar because there's no reason to use the uh, A1 into Duchess's stone skin. We should kill her this time. There we go, killed her. Into the A2, hopefully kill him every... Okay, nobody. Interesting. We ran out of the increased attack. That's what it was. That's what happened there. We got the sheep onto Wither. What kind of debuff did she place? Oh, ha, she put, placed, uh, placed Smite. That's pretty cool. Okay, so we'll go ahead and use this on Leo. Get him down pretty low. Maybe proc that uh, his unkillable. Not yet. Maybe some decreased attack onto him. Perfect. There we go. And then I need to get him fully booked because he'd be ready to use that A3 ability this turn had he been fully booked. 73,000 damage. Is it just combining the damage from both the hits into one? Or is it actually doing 73,000 damage in one hit? That's OP if so. But I don't know which one it is. 48 and 34. I think it's combining them. It has to be, right? There's no way he's actually doing 73,000 damage just in one hit from that ability. That's better than his. It's better than anything else he does, basically. What in the world? So as far as an arena champion, this dude's amazing. So good. 154,000 damage with a lot of auto play. Let's see some man some full auto. A lot of manual play, sorry. Let's do a full auto run of somebody who's a little bit, let's say, more power. But let's see. 459,000 plus one. Was it more two or Kangerfon? I don't know. doesn't matter. Let's see. Now, against more two and stuff like that, he does have a problem killing them. Because they are very high HP, like 100,000 plus. It's difficult for them to do 100,000 plus with no decreased defense, nothing like that. Let's go ahead and see what happens here. Really don't like hitting into that. I need to lower his speed as well, I think. Lower Necrit as well as um, Nutcracker. Let's see. Nobody's taking a turn yet. No real reason to do anything special just yet. Uh, plus, Kaimar is a sheep. He's just sitting over there doing nothing. Absolutely nothing. Okay, he's going off. We'll just wait. Wait for this turn of Georgia. Let's see what he does. Should should finish him off, I hope. Let's see. Kill Duchess, maybe? There she goes. 225,000 damage. So that's what happens, I guess, when you proc all of the ignore from that champion. When you proc the ignore defense from Helm Smasher as well as from uh, the passive ability, you do an insane amount of damage. If you don't proc both of those, you still, still do really good damage but not that insane level. So guys, with that said, I think I'm going to get off here and re-gear my Nutcracker to be a little bit slower. With Necrit, make him also a little bit slower. If you don't have Necrit, I don't think making him slower is the best plan of action, um, but I think he can make sense being at that slower speed. I may even run somebody instead of Kaimar. Not 100% sure. 
that Candrophon is absolutely destroying me. But hey, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully, if you pulled the Nutcracker, that you can get a pretty good team going. Hopefully, that kind of helps you out. He's an amazing champion. If you're considering building him and you haven't already, definitely go ahead and build him. He is so, so good. Hopefully, that gives you an idea how I would build him. And uh, with that said, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you all in the next one.